One word to describe the situation of France in the latter part of the 18th century was chaotic. The French Revolution emerged and a huge amount of execution, slaughter and bloodshed came. People were drowned in rivers for suspicions of holding pro-monarchist sentiment and many more were taken to guillotine structures all around the nation to meet executioners who became incredibly efficient at taking someone's head off. The reign of terror saw around 17,000 people lose their heads for having support for the executed king and queen, Louis XVI and Marie Antoinette. But before the revolution broke out, there was one sadistic execution carried out upon a man who tried to kill a king. Regicide is the act of planning or attempting or succeeding to kill a monarch. And Robert Francois Damien, the punishment was something which echoed the severity of his crimes. His execution method of being pulled apart by horses, however, did not go well. Robert Francois Damien was born in 1715 in the French town of Arras, and when he was a young man he joined the army. But he was then released from service and he found work inside of College of Jesuit Catholics with, within Paris. The Jesuits for some time had been persecuted, especially in England, but a number of people at this time believed that, that Robert was actually possessed and evil. And he earned a reputation for being Robert the Devil. He suffered from delusions or may have been insane, and he claimed later that he was irritated by religious matters and that he then turned against the French king, Louis XV, who became a target for his triads. Because of this, he tried to plot to the death of the king, and he carried out an act which came very close. On the 5th of January, 1757, at 4pm in the afternoon, King Louis XV was boarding his carriage within the Palace of Versailles, and there was a lot of other spectators and supporters. But... Robert then barged past the king's bodyguards and got close, and he grabbed a penknife which he had in his pocket. He lunged towards the king and plunged his weapon into the king, and despite only making a small wound, the king believed he was mortally wounded. But Robert did not try to escape, and he was beaten by the king's bodyguards and was then arrested. What had saved the king was the fact he was wearing a thicker layer of clothes because of the winter conditions, and the knife went less than half an inch into the king's chest. But there was a lot of panic, and he was bleeding, and he ordered his wife and confessor to be summoned to his bedside, inside of his palace. And his wife, it's believed, even prayed to God to ask for forgiveness as the king had slept with many of his mistresses behind the queen's back. However, the treatment of Robert, the assassin, was rather ruthless and brutal. He was taken quickly away to prison and was then tortured to see if he would spill any information about anyone else who conspired against the king. Throughout the centuries, torture was applied in these situations effectively. For example, upon Guy Fawkes during the gunpowder plot. Fawkes was racked brutally and was even thrown inside of an oubliette dungeon, known as Little Ease inside of the Tower of London, as he was subjected to a horrific ordeal but he did give over information. But despite the torture, it became clear that Robert was working alone in his actions and he was then quickly brought to trial. He was brought in front of two judges who would condemn him to death and they treated him very suspiciously and Robert was even secured down to the floor on a bed with chains inside of the courtroom as he was said to have been a danger and he was secured inside of what looks like a straitjacket. But for attempting to slaughter the king, he was of course sentenced to death as a regicide by the Parliament of Paris and he was to be drawn and quartered by horses. This was a horrific execution method, as horses would be secured to the limbs of Robert and these were then sent off in different directions resulting in dismemberment. It was a ruthless and horrific execution method and was a death that many who witnessed it would never forget. It was comparable with hanging, drawing and quartering, which was used in England, 
However, the date of Robert Francois de Mines' execution was the 28th of March, 1757. He was taken from his prison cell to his execution and he claimed that the day will be hard, but he was to be tortured before his execution ordeal with the horses. First, his legs were compressed inside a device which was considered the boots. These restricted his movement and locked him in place. Following this, Robert was branded and brutalised with red-hot pincers, and the hand in which he held the knife which attacked the king was branded and it was then burned using a mixture of molten lead, sulphur wax and boiling oil, which was poured onto his wounds. With this, he was then given to the French royal executioner, Charles Henry Sansom, who developed a notorious reputation later throughout the centuries for using the guillotine. Sansom cut the genitals off of Robert and he then secured him to the horses. His arms and legs were tied to four different creatures and after a while they were then driven off into different directions with the aim of ripping his arms and legs from his torso. But the first attempt to do this failed miserably. The limbs of Robert, when the horses were sent in their directions, did not come away, and the executioner, when then told to sever his tendons with a knife, he did this, and it was claimed that Robert at this point was still alive. But then, when the horses were driven away again, Robert's arms and legs were pulled away, and only his living torso was left. The crowd went wild with this and when it happened, and they cheered, and the final part of Robert's was then thrown onto a fire and was burned at the stake. Some sources claim that death came when his last arm was ripped from him, and his final words were, O oh death, why art thou so long in coming? And he asked God for mercy. One man who witnessed the execution of the attempted regicide in King Killed claimed, we had the courage to watch the dreadful sight for hours. Domain was a fanatic who, with the idea of doing a good work and obtaining a heavenly reward, had tried to assassinate Louis the Fifteenth. And though the attempt was a failure, he only gave the king a slight wound. He was torn to pieces as if his crime had been consummated. I was several times obliged to turn away my face and stop my ears as I heard his piercing shrieks, half of his body having been torn from him. Was it because their hearts were hardened? They told me, and I pretended to believe them, that their horror at the wretch's wickedness prevented them feeling that compassion which his unheard of torments should have excited." But after his death, the corpse of Robert had been reduced to ashes, and these were then scattered with no ceremony in the wind. Even his house was reduced to ashes, and a lot of his family were so embarrassed by his actions that they changed their names, and his close family members, including his daughter, were banished from France, never to return for the crimes of their father. This was the first incident of its king for almost two centuries in France, but he became a horrific and barbaric man who wanted to make a statement by trying to slaughter the king. It would be in the decades later that the thoughts of executing or killing a king was placed in the forefront of the minds of the French people, and they would order their king, King Louis XVI, onto the guillotine to be executed for crimes against the French population, and his wife Marie Antoinette would also suffer this fate. But in the years before... The thought and act of killing a king was something that one could be literally ripped apart by horses for. Thank you for watching, and to support, please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.